Hello and welcome to Economic Forum, a program where we discuss various issues affecting our economy in Zimbabwe. These can be issues to do with tourism, manufacturing, education, sport, and many other things. We discuss them in order to see how they impact on our economy. My name is John Masubu. Today, we'd like to discuss journalism and how it contributes to business and economic development. Journalism is often referred to as the fourth estate coming after the judiciary, the executive, as well as, as the legislature. We've invited the Secretary General of the Zimbabwe Union of Journalists, Perfect Longwani, to discuss all these and other issues. Perfect, it's perfect that you're here and welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm honored to be here. Yes. What is the state of journalism today in Zimbabwe as we begin our program? Um, thank you for that question because then it gives us insights into how um, the sector is. Um, obviously, from where we sit as a union, there are quite a number of issues that we deal with uh, that um, uh, pertain to uh, the sector and how uh, journalists operate. And one of the issues that uh, we, we deal with is um, the issue of uh, welfare of journalists. We also deal with the issues of uh, labor uh, rights. Uh, we also deal with issues of ensuring that our journalists are secure as they are executing their, their duties across the board, whether in the newsroom or on the field. And uh, we also deal with the issue of um, ethics you know, ethical considerations, eth ethical uh, uh, work that journalists must do. And um, what we have seen is that on the front of um, um, welfare, journalists are not remunerated well, and it leads to a, a vice in the sector, which vice is uh, the issue of uh, brown envelopism, as I, li I like to call it where you find that journalists have ignored ethical considerations because of the tummy. They have ignored eth ethical considerations because of what they get as remuneration. And uh, uh, this is one of the things that we really are trying to, to uh, work on to ensure that we return to uh, ethics of journalism and ensure that our journalists operate uh, following the codes as it were. Uh, on the front of um, uh, their uh, labor rights, we are also engaging uh, quite a number of stakeholders, government included, uh, employers, to ensure that at least their rights are observed as they are executing. Today, when we talk about journalism perfect, you know, we are talking about many newspapers, mm. many radio stations, Indeed. as well as social media. How is that impacting on journalism, especially as you are supposed to be credible, especially with uh, regards uh, reporting on business mm. issues and so forth? Mm. Uh, because most of the issues are now coming out on social media, and mm. yet people still want to verify with you. Mm. And I like, I like the term that you use, that uh, the media uh, has to be credible, right? A credible source of information, and that is the rule of the thumb. Uh, what we have seen is that uh, people now on social media have uh, um, decided or are in disregard of that rule of the thumb to say it does not matter the kind of information that I'm putting out. What is important is that do I have likes, do I have comments, do I have uh, uh, followers? And people are now uh, after money. Uh, at the expense of the rule of the thumb, which is credibility, objectivity, fair coverage. And you find that because of that, we are having a serious challenge where now everyone in the media space is uh, uh, painted with the same brush to say that uh, a journalist are liars. Uh, I want to think that you have heard people talk about that, that journalists are liars. But uh, it, it is not uh, that journalists are liars. It is an issue that people now are after likes and money. And it does affect um, uh, economic development or the way our economy also operates. Because uh, can you imagine if someone then decides just to write unsubstantiated issues, 
issues that are not uh, credible about an economic activity. What it means is that even investors outside the country or investors within uh, the country are not going to, to have the appetite to want to invest in that particular sector where information is, is given uh, that is not credible. Do you think that uh, industry out there really respects uh, those journalists who write about business? Do they look forward to stories on business, uh, as you rightly say, that uh, they should be you know, well-written stories and so forth? Uh, you, you, you know, the question that you're asking brings me to an issue uh, that is uh, on our table at the moment, the issue of media capture. And when we talk about media capture mostly, people think that we are talking about politics. It is different. We, we can talk about media capture from a corporate point of view, where you find that uh, uh, corporates are also uh, playing that role where they say, ah, okay, at a particular organization, I have my boy who reports on stories that I give them. And that alone also compromises the quality of work that we then see in our newspapers. And it goes back to the same issue of uh, uh, the welfare of journalists. Because if the journalist is not well remunerated, if there is no value attached to a journalist, what it means is they are prone to uh, abuse and they can uh, actually be uh, uh, susceptible to capture as it were. That's perfect, Shongwani, who is the Secretary General of the Zimbabwe Union of Journalists. Today we are discussing the role of journalists in business and economic development. So join us in the second segment of Economic Forum. We are now in the second segment of Economic Forum where we are discussing the role of journalists in economic and business development. And with our guest here, Perfect Longwani, who is the Secretary General of the Zimbabwe Union of Journalists. Perfect, let's now talk about the role of journalists, especially specialization, because that's when they are able to unpack issues mm. for the ordinary members of the public. So this is, this is very interesting because then it speaks about uh, uh, the role that uh, a journalist must play as a communicator. So in other words, if, if you are going to be a communicator, you need to simplify issues. Uh, you have examples where uh, you know that uh, the the RBZ will come with uh, its policies. The Minister of Finance will uh, also come with a uh, national budget and uh, uh, policies. Uh, figures, especially, that are then contained within those policy documents are one uh, aspect that really affect the citizen and even our e e economics, as it were. To say that the figures that are then uh, issued out by either the minister or the reserve bank uh, governor, what do they mean? What is the impact, the, the kind of impact they have on our economy? So as a journalist, you must be able to then uh, simplify uh, those figures to ensure that the consumers of the information understand the uh, national discourse, understand where we are going, the trajectory that we are taking. But we, we find that in most cases, we as journalists then, we, we, we don't have the tenacity to be able to interrogate those figures because of a disconnect that we find in the curriculum where at a college there is no specialization to say this is going to be a, an economic reporter, this is going to be a financial reporter. You find we have uh, people who are called business reporters, right? And it's an umbrella. Business, like you said in your intro, business can be from agriculture to honey making. Business can be from uh, uh, manufacturing to uh, what, whatever you can think around tourism. So what we are saying is, when our journalists now specialize in particular bits, we are going to be able to get rich information. 
well-researched information, information that is uh, uh, understandable by even someone who is an ordinary citizen, because that is the role of the journalist. In other jurisdictions, what they do is they bring a, a, a specialist in a particular sector and then train them as a journalist. So you are an economist first and then trained as a journalist. So in your reportage, you already have a, a wealth of information in so far as uh, uh, economics is concerned. So you are, you are able to then uh, relay the information in a friendly uh, language. We are now in the digital age. Mm. And uh, one of the issues that is often raised by your members, journalists, mm. are that while they learn some of these things uh, at college, at universities, when they come to the workplace mm. and they try to persuade the employer uh, to provide them so that they can uh, do their journalism uh, efficiently and effectively, they find that uh, there is no positive response. Mm -hmm. How are you dealing with that, since you also deal with the welfare of the journalists at their workplace? Um, this is a very critical question for us, because uh, when you see the way that uh, information now uh, is passed from one person to the next, it's, uh, it's uh, at the click of a button. That means that as the media, as we know it, we need then to see a media that is uh, transformative, a media that allows itself to transform and move with the times, move with the digital age, as you, as you call it. And uh, if the media does not do that, it may uh, be rendered uh, irrelevant. And uh, it is quite critical that media houses or employers deal with the question of uh, the digital media at the moment. Because what we are seeing is, uh, as uh, I have indicated earlier, is that we, we have uh, people who are called influencers. And it's unfortunate that uh, our consumers of information do not understand or have uh, a little understanding of uh, the differences between an influencer and a journalist. They think that someone who can post information, who can post uh, videos, uh, are journalists. And there is a big uh, difference. Uh, the difference is that, first, journalists are professionals. Journalists are people who are trained, who know uh, the do's and don'ts of the industry. Journalists are people who are bound by a code of ethics that they must follow. Uh, I like, uh, though there are some uh, issues with uh, the, uh, the Cyber uh, in, in Data Protection Act, we, we don't agree on quite a number of issues where the, the act says that uh, for you to be able to take me a picture, for instance, you must seek consent. So I'm, I'm thinking we are at a riotous uh, a situation. And here I am, I'm a journalist, I want to take photos, but I must seek permission. So those are some of the issues that we think uh, we, we don't agree with the, that law. But when you also look at that uh, particular act, it does deal with the protection of uh, a, a credible information to say that whatever you're going to publish must be credible, must be truthful. Eh? It must not injure the next person. In other words, it must not violate uh, the rights of uh, another person. And as journalists, we understand these laws. We understand that these are the laws that govern our operation. But when you go to the other side of the coin, which is the influencer side, you may find that the, the, there is total disregard of these uh, uh, values. Um, and they post uh, things as and when they, they, they so wish. No one will ask them, right? But we have mechanisms as journalists to say, if you, you write uh, something that defames someone, there are processes that are followed to ensure that there is redress, right? But with an influencer, how, how do you deal with that? That's perfect, Shlongwane, who is the Secretary General of the Zimbabwe Union of Journalists. We are talking about the role of journalists and journalism in business and economic development. So join us in the third and final segment of Economic Forum.
We are now in the third and final segment of Economic Forum, where today we are discussing the role of journalists and journalism in business and economic development. And our guest is the Secretary General of the Zimbabwe Union of Journalists, Zuj Perfect Shongwane. A perfect uh, the issue of recognition. Mm. And nowadays there are so many awards. We know you have your own the National Journalism and Media Awards in JAMA, mm. but uh, out of it has grown maybe 10 or even 20 others. Are we really serious about how we are recognizing uh, good journalism out of these uncoordinated awards? When we recognize journalists uh, through the National Journalism and Media Awards, it is a way uh, of recognizing the work that they do, the toil throughout the year. And to say that this, these are the ones that performed above par, right? Uh, the, the challenge that we are having is that, uh, uh, like you're rightly saying, we have seen uh, a number of uh, other awards mushrooming. But uh, you, you then want to question, is it about recognition of the work that journalists do, or it's about someone then at the end of uh, uh, the awards pocketing money? Uh, not that uh, people must not have awards. Yes, it's good to have uh, several of them, because then at the end of the day, we want to recognize journalists. And uh, uh, the unfortunate part, though, is uh, when we engage with uh, a, a lot of um, our members, you find that some who, in most cases, are not recognized through those awards are people who would, who would have done quite well in terms of uh, writing stories. And by writing stories, we mean stories that really stick to the ethical considerations of journalism. To say, is your story uh, well researched? Is it factual? Is it truthful? Is it objective? These are the things that we are looking at. Uh, but you find that in some instances, uh, people then are rewarded by the number of stories they have written, regardless of the ethical considerations. So by one story, and they are then called, they are the journalist of the year, mm -hmm. judged from only one story mm -hmm. written in May. Yes. Uh, I, I mean, have you looked at that? Uh, if uh, someone is going to be called the business journalist of the year, mm -hmm. and even CEOs and chairpersons and the business community mm -hmm. would be surprised because they would have not seen that person reporting or read about uh, uh, their stories. So what we do is that uh, we, in our recognition of journalists, we call for entries, right? So a journalist will choose from yes. his or her story, then they, they send that story. Then we look at that particular story that has been sent. Um, uh, due to, uh, obviously, issues around uh, resources, we cannot have all the stories that a journalist would have written throughout the year. So we, this is why you then find that it is based on a single story that they would have written. Uh, but probably let me go back a little bit to uh, the issue of recognition. It, it, it does not only uh, relate to journalists as we spoke about them earlier. Mm -hmm. To say uh, those that have basic uh, training should be called journalists. Uh, they are people in communities mm, who do the work of journalists, uh, who uh, are responsible with their information. So you find that in most cases, such people also are not recognized, but they are doing what one would call responsible uh, reporting, where they, they are really bringing out community issues, commu issues that affect communities. Uh, and uh, they, they seldom are not uh, recognized. And we think that, that uh, uh, there must be something or some systems that we put in place to ensure that there is recognition for that. What that will do is it will then uh, ensure that other communities uh, um, do the same to ensure that at least their issues are brought to the fore. Perfect. Let's talk about ethics as it relates to business reporting or economic reporting as well as societal reporting, because we hear business people crying foul that, yes, they say it is an investigative story, but they did not get our side of the story. And on the social side, 
we also see journalists uh, taking photos of people who are lying dead on the ground and so forth. Just address those issues. Mm -hmm. so, so with uh, regards to the first part where you say in the corporate world will complain and say that the, a journalist never came to get um, uh, our side of the story. Surely when you see that happen it means that uh, that person is not practicing journalism because any story as they say is either two or three or four sides to it and you must explore all those signs to ensure that the story that you are giving out is uh, uh, well packaged is uh, uh, truthful and factual if you don't bring in the voice of the uh, other party then what you are doing is either you are uh, uh, bent on malice to ensure that uh, the image of that particular individual or that corporate individual is uh, uh, dragged through the mud. But that's not the role of journalism. The role of journalism and journalists is to ensure that the story is told in full and the story does cover all the signs. However, there is also an issue around uh, 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 corporates where you uh, at times try to reach out to corporates and they don't they don't they're not forthcoming with information right but this is not to justify uh, violations of ethical considerations it, it it cannot be journalists must stick to ethical considerations because there is no uh, journalists have no business in becoming malicious a journalist must be sensitive with information, right? And uh, say that this information is this sensitive. I cannot push it out. This information affects my community this way. I cannot push it out. See, so it, it deals with the issue of ethics. And we think that as long as we are ethical, we are professional. And when we are professional, we, uh, we cannot have the challenges that we are seeing in the sector at the moment. As long as we are ethical, we are professional. Those are the words of Perfect Shongwane, who is the Secretary General of the Zimbabwe Union of Journalists, Zuj. Perfect was our guest today on Economic Forum, and we've been discussing the role of journalists in economic and business development. So if you'd like to get in touch with us, you can do so on the numbers that are showing on your screen, or you can engage with us on the social media platforms that are also showing on your screen. If you have missed some of the episodes of Economic Forum, you can view or watch them on our YouTube channel, which is Economic Forum Zimbabwe. So on behalf of Perfect Shongwane of Zuj and the production crew, this is John Masugu wishing you happy viewing.